All right. Good afternoon, fellow igniters. Uh, it's Fellowship Friday, so I, tonight we're going to be talking about the story of Jonah. So to give you a little bit of background, Jonah probably was written somewhere around 800 BC, 750 BC, somewhere in that range. So during that time, there were still two, still two kingdoms. You had the kingdom of Judah and you had the northern kingdoms. Uh, the Assyria was the primary dominant empire in the world. The Assyrians were not particularly great people. They were a really vicious empire. So they were conquering a lot of the people around. You really didn't want to be conquered by the Assyrians because they treated people really, really badly. Uh, so that's sort of the, uh, the background as we start into the book of Jonah. So at the beginning of the story, the word of God comes to the prophet Jonah. And God says to Jonah, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh to the people of Nineveh, and I want you to preach to the people of Nineveh and tell them that they've been so bad, their sins have come up before me, that I'm going to essentially destroy Nineveh. It's gotten that bad. So uh, Jonah so Jonah says, okay, you know, he thinks about it. He, he really doesn't want to do this, right? So instead of going, listening to God, when God tells uh, Jonah to go to Nineveh, and Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, Right? It's one of the biggest cities in the world, probably 120,000 people, something like that. But it's the capital city of this really sort of evil empire. Right, So the people are not good. They, you know, the Israelites don't like the Ninevites. They don't like the Assyrians. You know, they're afraid of the Assyrians or this big empire. They, they treat people really terribly. You know, they're very vicious. They're very cruel. So when Jonah gets the word that, from God that he's supposed to go and preach to Nineveh, he doesn't want to do it. So instead of going to Nineveh, jo uh, Jonah goes down to this port of Joppa. He gets on a boat and he goes in the opposite direction. He takes the boat towards Tarshish, right? Uh, the city of Tarshish. So, you know, he's out on this boat. He's out on this ship. They're, they're heading, you know, they're heading towards the city of Tarshish. And I know a lot of you probably know the story, but God sends a storm, right? It's a big storm. The waves are rocking, you know, the boats are rocking. Nothing's going well. The sailors are scared. They think the boat's going to break apart. You know, there's lightning around. It's a terrible storm. And the sailors are trying to figure out what's going on. So they take and they, they take all of the sort of the luggage all of the, the boxes, everything they have on this boat, and they're casting the ship, and they're casting it over the side to try to make the ship lighter so they can get through the storm. Well, the storm doesn't stop, so they go to find Jonah, right? They're all praying to their gods. They're not Israelites. They're praying to their gods. Nothing's happening. The storm's just getting worse. So they find Jonah sleeping downstairs, and they ask Jonah, hey, you know, do you know what's going on? And Jonah says, you know, I'm a Hebrew, right? I'm an Israelite. You know, and I serve the, the true God, right? I serve the God, the God of Israel, right? And I, and, and I know what's going on. You know, I was supposed to do one thing. God told me he wanted me to do something. I chose not to do it. So the reason, I'm the reason you have this terrible storm. So the, the sailors are like, well, what do we need to do then? How can we make this situation better? How can we make this storm go away? You know, Jonah says, well, you know... You can, you can cast me over the side, right? They, before we even get to this part, you know, the sailors know that, that Jonah is really the problem, right? Because they casted lots. You know, it's like rolling dice, sort of. They're colorful stones or colorful sticks. They cast lots, and those lots turned up and said that the, 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 problem, the person who's the problem on this boat is Jonah. So they know that before they even talk to him. I think some of you probably have seen the, uh, the veggie tale version of this at some point. Right? You remember, instead of casting lots, I think they play uh, Go Fish in, in the Veggie Tail cartoon. And the veggie, they play Go Fish, and the Go Fish reveals that Jonah is the one that's the problem. But they, they don't immediately throw Jonah overboard. They try, to, you know, they try to sail harder. They get everybody sailing in the same direction. They're trying to get the ship going in the right direction. But the storm just gets worse. Nothing's making it better. It's just getting worse. And if they don't do something soon, the ship's going to break up. So, you know, Jonah says, you know, you got to throw me overboard. So the people, the sailors say, okay, you know, we're going to have to do what we have to do. You know, they, 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 they uh, make a sacrifice to God and they take Jonah and they throw him overboard into the sea. So immediately when they throw Jonah into the sea, you know, the, 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 the sea's calm, the storm stops, you know, and all goes much better for the sailors. Right. It doesn't go better for Jonah. Right. I think a lot of you know this part of the story. So Jonah hits the water. He's in the water. He's sinking in the water. And God sends a giant fish, a, a, a great fish, and it swallows up Jonah. 
right? You know, some people, I don't know how you, what kind of fish it was, right? You know, when I was a kid, younger than you guys, and I first heard this story, you know, they showed a sperm whale. That was part of it. So I always sort of think of a sperm whale as being what ate Jonah. You know, it's obviously not a fish, it's a mammal. You know, I don't know that that really matters because the translation is like a great sea beast. It might have been a whale, something like a whale shark. You know, it might have been this sort of giant sea creature that we don't even have today. You know, something more like a, you know, just a giant, really giant fish. Whatever it was, God sent a giant fish and the giant fish ate Jonah, right? Normally that would be really, really bad and it was pretty bad for Jonah. But, you know, God is a God of miracles and Jonah survives you know, the great fish eats Jonah. He spends uh, three days and three nights in the belly of this fish, right? And, and, and so, you know, you get, it becomes sort of a dark time for Jonah. This is not easy for him, right? He's now inside the belly of a fish, right? So Jonah prays to God and he acknowledges what he did wrong. It's a really nice prayer in the book of Jonah. You know, it's a prayer of thanksgiving. And he ends that prayer by acknowledging that salvation belongs, belongs to the Lord. Right? It's, a, it's a very fundamental truth in uh, Jonah. Salvation belongs to the Lord. He says this prayer of thanksgiving. Salvation belongs to the Lord during the time of Jonah. Salvation belongs to the Lord today during our time. Right, And so he, he acknowledges this to God. And so, uh, so God essentially releases Jonah. So this giant fish, this great fish, instead of traveling by ship, which would have been a lot nicer, Jonah travels by in the belly of a giant fish for three days and three nights, right? Which, which, which is sort of prophetic, right? It's very prophetic. Christ talks about how the only sign he's going to give the people during his time is the sign of Jonah. And what he's talking about is after he dies on the cross, he's going to spend, you know, three days and three nights in, in, in a tomb before he comes back from the dead, right? That's the sign of Jonah uh, that, that Jesus Christ talks about later. Right, but so Jonah spends three nights, three days in a sh inside the fish, and finally vomits. The Bible says that it vomits him up on land, and so Jonah is delivered, and uh, so he's delivered back from from the belly of the fish. So now he decides he's going to go ahead and do what God asked him to do. So Jonah goes to this great city of Nineveh. You know, it's a huge city. It's going to take him a few days just to preach inside this giant city. He starts preaching to these people who he really doesn't like, right? These are the evil Ninevites, the Assyrians. He starts preaching to these people, you know, that God's going to destroy your city in 40 days. You know, similar to what, you know, it sort of brings back memory of Noah, right? Where it rained for 40 days when, when, when God was destroying the world at that time. But he's going to destroy Nineveh in 40 days. And, and the Ninevites actually listen, right? They hear this and, you know, they're sort of overcome by their own guilt. So they turn back to God. And there's this wonderful scene with the king, right? Where the king really acknowledges that they had done wrong. You know, and he wears sackcloth and he prays to God. So there's this period of repentance in the city of Nineveh. And the people turn away from what they're doing wrong. And, and they turn back, they acknowledge their sin and they turn back to God. So God, you know, God forgives Nineveh. Right? He chooses not to destroy Nineveh. And this is historical, right? Nineveh, the, the Assyrian Empire doesn't fall for another 150 years or so. I think it falls around 612 BC to the next great empire that comes along, Babylon. But it, but it doesn't fall now. The people repented. God forgives the Ninevites. So you would, think, you would think that Jonah would be pretty happy, right? Instead of the city being destroyed, God has had mercy. He's a, he's a loving God. He's quick to compassion. He's slow to anger. He's showing mercy. And so, he, you know, he forgives the Ninevites, you know, and these, this sort of people that were, were not good turn to God. And, Jonah, but, and so you would think Jonah would be happy. Jonah's not happy. Jonah's actually, that's, he says, you know, this is really why I didn't want to go here in the first place. I know I know you, God. I know that you're slow to anger. I know that you're compassionate. I know that you're quick to mercy. And I, this is exactly what I was afraid of. I was afraid you were going to forgive these people. That's not what I wanted. That's why I didn't want to come in the first place. I wanted these people destroyed. So he goes outside the city. You know, he goes outside, I think, the east gate. And he sits down in the dust, Jonah does. And he's sort of looking out on the city. And he's sad. And he's sulking, and he's angry, and he's unhappy with God. And he's sitting out there, and the sun's beating down, and it's hot, and Jonah's not happy. 
So, you know, as he's sitting there, and the story continues as we head towards the end of Jonah. So he's sitting there, and God eventually sends a vine. So this vine, because it's really hot, right? This part of the world is not a cold part of the world. The sun's beating down, there's no shade, and it's hot for Jonah. So this vine, God sends this vine. This vine grows up out of the ground with these big leaves, covers Jonah. He's very happy. It provides him shade. So it puts him, it's a much nicer situation for Jonah. So, but the next morning, God sends a worm, and the worm eats the roots of this vine that's sort of providing him shade, and it destroys the vine. And Jonah gets really angry, and he gets angry with God. And God is using this to sort of give a lesson to Jonah. And God says to Jonah, you know, you're angry with me. You're angry about this vine that you didn't make, and you didn't water, and you had nothing vested in. And yet you're angry that, 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 I, that this vine was destroyed, you know. But we're talking about Nineveh. We're talking about a city of 120,000 people, right? People that don't know their left hand from their right hand. You know, people that were made in my image, right? The 120,000 people, you know, should I not show mercy on them? Should I not want them to, re to, to come to repentance? You know, and that's sort of how, and I'll, and I'll pull it up and I'll read the end of the chapter really quick. Because it, it ends pretty interestingly. It says, but the Lord said, this is the last chapter of the book of Jonah. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you, did, you, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? And that's how the book of Jonah ends. All right, so it's a great it's a great book. It's not very long, it's four chapters. There's a few lessons I sort of wanted to talk about out of this. One of those is this, this chapter, you know, this chapter of the Bible really shows the sovereignty of God, right? God, had, God knew exactly what he was gonna do, and he chose Jonah to do it. And there was nothing that Jonah was going to be able to do that was gonna thwart the will of God, right? So ultimately what God wanted to happen, happened. It also shows how God loves all people, right? Israel was a special nation. You know, they're chosen by God. They're God's people. And Jonah was part of this tradition, and he certainly saw himself that way. He didn't really see the Assyrians this way. He didn't see Nineveh this way. But God saw them differently, right? God loves the lost. He loved the Assyrians. He loved the people of the city of Nineveh, right? So that's a lesson, I think, for us today. Right? It's a big lesson out of the story of Jonah. God loves the lost. He sent Jonah to Nineveh. You know, the people repented. They turned to God. You know, God forgave them. God loves the lost. Whether, whether during the time of Jonah or today, the people around us, he, God created all of us, right? God loves all people. And, and just like Jonah is sent out to the lost for God, we're also sent out to talk to other people that don't know God. Right? So, they, so that they, they can understand who God is, that he is a God of love, he is a God of mercy, a God of compassion, a God slow to anger, you know, a God who, where, where salvation belongs to the Lord, all of these things. So I think that's an important lesson of Jonah for us, right? That we're supposed to be God's light to the world, just like God sent Jonah to the lost. Um, another lesson out of this uh, is that we should be celebrating when other people are blessed, right? That's a big sort of part of this story. You know, Jonah doesn't celebrate when God blesses the people of Nineveh, right? He pouts, you know, we, we can be the same way sometimes, right? We can be jealous when we see other people that are blessed, when we really should have been celebrating with them that God blessed them. So I think that's another good lesson out of this, that we should also try to have, you know, hearts that really appreciate what God has done for us, but also celebrate what God does for other people, right? And rejoice at what God does for other people. And then finally, last point I wanted to sort of make here is that God doesn't give up on us, right? You know, it would, be, it would have been very easy in this story for God to give up on Jonah, right? Jonah did exactly the opposite of what God asked him to do. God does not give up on Jonah, right? It's not easy for Jonah. He gets eaten by a fish, right? It's horrible. But God does not give up on Jonah. He's a God of second chances. He's a God of third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, right? God doesn't give up on us. No matter how, no matter if we do stupid things, 
No matter if we turn the wrong direction and go towards Tarshish instead of towards Nineveh, God doesn't give up on us. You know, he's a God who's forgiving and he's a God who loves us. And he's a God of second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. So that's also an important lesson, right? That, that, that he's always going to be there for us. There, he's always going to desire that relationship and he's, he's not going to give up on us. So those are just some of the lessons I wanted you to sort of think about uh, as you're thinking about the, the, the prophet in the Bible of Jonah. You know, it's a great story. It's a crazy story, right? It's the only story I've ever read where somebody gets eaten by a giant fish, right? But it happened. And, it ha and Jesus talks about it a lot. He talks about how, you know, during his time, Jesus' time during his ministry, when everybody was asking him for signs and you know, he says, you know, you're, you're a wicked generation. The only sign I'm going to give you, at one point he says this, the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of Jonah. And he was talking ultimately about the fact that salvation does come from the Lord. And ultimately, that ultimate salvation came through him dying on the cross, right? Which, you know, Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days. You know, Jesus was in the grave for three days before he's resurrected. And so that's the sign. This book and this story, that's the sign that Jesus points to for the salvation that he brings to the world. So that's one of the great verses out of the book of Jonah, is that salvation belongs to the Lord. So I do have a few challenges for you. First challenge is if you can get your hands on these, eat a couple Swedish fish in honor of the book of Jonah, right? Jonah was eaten by fish. And Swedish fish, why? Because Swedish fish are pretty good, right? It's not the best candy out there. There's better ones. You know, sweet tarts, uh, Sour Patch Kids, there's, there's certainly some better candies than Swedish Fish. But they're not bad, right? If you don't have anything else, Swedish Fish are good. So if you get your hands on some Swedish Fish this week, go ahead and eat a Swedish Fish in honor of Jonah and then remember this story. Good. Second one is a memory verse for this week is Psalm 62.1. Psalm 62.1. And the verse goes, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Because that's a big theme of this, of this chapter, that salvation comes from the Lord. Again, Psalm 62.1. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Right? Ultimately, Jonah had, to, Jonah had to find rest in God alone in this story. And his salvation came from God. So one more time, Psalm 62.1. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. And my last challenge for you this week, you know, sort of going along with the theme that we should, uh, you know, that we should be thankful when God blesses other people, is if there's somebody that really bothers you sometimes, and someone that you're not close to, maybe somebody at school, maybe a brother or sister, my challenge for you this week is to pray for that person. Pray for that person who you don't always have a great relationship. Pray that God blesses them. Pray that God does something good for them. You know, so just, I, I just think that's, that's, that would be a great thing to do based on this story of Jonah. So those are my uh, three challenges for you this week. The easy one, eat Swedish fish. The other one is the memory verse, Psalm 62.1. And finally, my final challenge is to pray for somebody that you might not otherwise pray for. Pray that God blesses them. Pray that they'll know God better. That will help to strengthen their relationship with God and their relationship with you. Those are my challenges for this week. All right, I'm going to end, I think, this time with a really quick prayer, and then we'll go ahead and finish Fellowship Friday. All right, dear Lord, we thank you uh, for this time. You know, where it's, it's, it's too bad we can't gather together, but we certainly understand that. And we know that even though we can't gather together, that you're here with every single one of us, dear God, and that you're our sovereign God, just like you were the sovereign Lord with Jonah, you're the sovereign Lord with us. And we do pray, dear Lord, that you'll help, to, help us to have hearts for the lost and have hearts for other people and help us to love other people the way that you love other people, dear God. That's my prayer this week. We just pray, I just pray that you bless these boys and girls and just help them to grow in their relationship with you and that you'll help all of us to grow ever closer to you. And we are thankful, dear God, that salvation comes from the Lord. And we're so thankful for what you did for us on the cross, dear God. And we just, we mean, it's the greatest gift of all time, and we're so thankful for that. We just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, Fellowship Friday. Thanks, and have a great week.